Hello and welcome to the part 3 of the tutorial series on Razor Pages with Entity Framework Core using ASP.NET Core with Visual Studio 2017. Now today we are going to cover the sort, filter and paging and for the first two parts you just cons consult the link um, on my video description um, in the actual YouTube and uh, please go through the first two tutorials and that will be um, very essential for you to understand this third part because the third part is built on the first two completion of the first two for you to completely understand the concepts now this illustration shows a completed page the column headings are click clickable and links and it sorts the column clicking a column heading repeatedly switches between the ascending and the descending order So we'll go back to the code and what we'll do is we'll add sorting to the index page. So we'll add strings to the students index.cshtml.cs. So get to the pages and students index.cshtml and this is index.cshtml.cs page right so I have copied some code on the clipboard for brevity and I will just add it under the public construct pasted in the index.cshtml.cs and we will further update the on uh, get a sync uh, code with the code that I have got on my clipboard again. So there's the copied code all pasted. Now in this going back to the slideshow This preceding code receives a sort order parameter from the query string in the URL. The URL including the query string is generated by the author tag helper. So if we view the code again, now this receives a sort order. This is the sort order parameter from the query string. It receives it from the query string in the URL. So the past URL will have this sort order. Now the URL including the query string is generated by anchor tag helper. So I'll put a link on my video description to find more information about the anchor tag helper. Now the sort order parameter is either a name or a date. Name sort or date sort. So the sort order parameter is optionally followed by underscore desk which is descending to specify the descending order. The default sort order is ascending. When the index page is requested from the student's link, now coming back to the, when the index page is requested from the student's link, there's no query string. The students are displayed in the ascending order by the last name. Ascending order by last name is the default or the fall through case in the switch statement. So if we go back to the switch statement, so if the default is, uh, this is the ascending sort ascending that is the default case now when the user clicks a column heading link the appropriate sort order value is provided in the query string value now name sort and date sort are used by the razor page to configure the column heading hyperlinks with the appropriate query string values right now in this index.cshtml.cs file and on get async these two highlighted lines these are of importance now the first line this name sort equals string dot is null or empty sort order question mark name descending colon 
empty string. Now what this means that when the sort order is null or empty, name sort is set to the name descending. If the sort order is not null or empty, then it is uh, you know uh, assigned the value of an empty string. Now this is this question mark and this colon. This is known as a ternary operator. Now these two statements in conjunction, they enable the page to set the column heading hyperlinks as next is uh, this method uses link to entities to specify the column to sort by. The code initializes an I queryable student before the switch statement and modifies it in the switch statement. Uh, we'll get back to that in a bit. When an I queryable is created or modified, no query is sent to the database. The query isn't executed until the I queryable object is converted into a collection. I queryable are converted to a collection by calling the method such as, as such as to list a sync. Therefore, the I queryable code results in a single query that's not executed until the following statement is executed. So if you get back to the code again, in this last line of code, that's only when um, this to list async method is called that the um, student object is sent to the database. Okay, so um, getting back now we will add column heading hyperlinks to the student index page and we'll replace the code in the students index.cshtml. So we'll open the students index.cshtml and I've copied some code which I will put. Okay. So I have put the code over here in this index.cshtml page, so I have just highlighted this part and this part. So this is the code that I have changed. So now in this preceding code, I'll go through the explanation. Now in this preceding code, um, it adds the code adds hyperlinks to the last name and the enrollment date column headings and uses the information in the name sort and date sort to get set up hyperlinks with the current sort order values. Just to explain this, you know, now this is the hyperlink to the last name and this is the hyperlink it has put on the enrollment date. Now to verify that the sorting works, I will run the application and click last name and enrollment date. So as per this one okay here we go control f5 now students now last name this is see is this by default it is on the ascending order alonso anand barzud kas it's ascending order so if we click it becomes in the descending order Similarly, for the enrollment date, now it is in, um, it's just in a mixed order. So, it'll make it um, in the ascending order and clicking it again, this hyperlink enrollment date, it will bring it in the descending order. Just close this application. Now, next is, um, we'll add a search box to the student index page. How do we do that? Now, to add filtering to the student's index page, a text box and a submit button must be added to the razor page. Now the text box will put the search string or anybody can put a search string to uh, on the first or the last name and the page model is also updated to use the text box value. So how do we do that? Now this was the search, the sort functionality we have seen already out of the way. Now we are going to do the search functionality or filtering functionality. So 
now in the CS page, I'll open the CS page and I'll have to change the on get async. So I think it's already there. It's already changed for you. From the previous version, it was current filter equals search string and in this extra block of code. So in this block of code, the explanation goes as follows. Now this block of code adds the search string parameter to the on get async method. And the search string value is received from a text box that's added in the next section. Now added to the link statement is a where clause. So where is the where clause? This is the where clause. Student IQ dot where. Now this where clause selects only students whose last name, whose first name or last name contains the search string. So this is the statement s student dot last name dot contains search string or student dot first mid name dot contains the search string. The link statement is executed only if there is a value to search for. That's pretty understood. So if there is no search string to search, which the, the search string will be put in the text box, it cannot find anything. So next we will again come back to the view page, index.cshtml page pages slash students slash index.cshtml page and add a bit of a code which is on my clipboard again copy and I think I have already had it so this is the part okay so now this part what it does this code uses the form tag helper to add the search text box and button. By default, the form tag helper submits form data with a post. With post, the parameters are passed in the HTTP message body and not in the URL. Okay. With When HTTP get is used, the form data is passed in the URL as query strings. So if we get back to the code, this is the form tag helper. Now it get uh, it puts a, a input type a text box with the name of search string and it gets its value from model dot current filter and there is a submit button with a value search which is the name of the button and this particular class and it helps the submission of the form data with a post. Now with the post, the parameters are passed in the HTTP message body and not in the URL. Now when get method is used, the form data is passed in the URL as query strings. Okay. Now we'll test the app by selecting the students tab and enter a search string and click on search. Okay. So do that. Here is my application. Students search. So let us search with Justin. Justin or Peggy. See. I think we are searching with first mid name also. We can search. So Peggy. So hope this is not case sensitive. Peggy. And search. So just one result fulfilling that criteria with the fine uh, first name as Peggy has been selected. Great. So next is um, again, let us search one more result, say Anand. I would like to show you something. Now in this result, you can see there is a search string, this part. Students, this is the query string part on the URL. So that's what we are telling. If we have 
put a get method the form data is passed in the url as query strings now this get method where is it put from this is from index.cshtml.cs on get async okay right um, now if this page is bookmarked say get back to that page if this page is bookmarked the bookmark contains the url to the page and the search string query string this is the query string is anand the method equals get in the form tag now where is that method in the get yeah so this is the method get that's what does the trick is now this causes the query string to be generated so this is on the form side or the view index view that method equals get is dictating whether it is a get request or whether it is a post request now next we'll get to the adding paging functionality to the students index page so going back to the slideshow now what is paging now if there are numerous of hundreds or tens of records that is not proper to show in a single page then we go for a pagination like you have seen that you know at the most there are 10 records in a page and there are 300 records then there will be 30 pages so you will have all this previous and next button to go to the previous page if it is not the first page um, in that case you can't go through the previous page but if it is second and onwards and uh, it, you can always go to the previous page and if it is not the last page you can go to the next page all right so what we'll do to the code to get it this achieved we'll create a um, in the projects folder we'll create a paginated list.cs file okay so click on the project and add class let that class name be paginated list paginated list paginated list okay so it is all created for me and i will just copy it over paste from my clipboard now here again going back to the explanation now here the create async method in the preceding code so where is the preceding code create async method right so create async method in this code takes page size and page number so page size and page number and applies the appropriate skip and take statements to the i variable skip and Take, it applies to the i variable okay because you know source is i variable of type t is passed and it is using await source dot skip so skip and take statements to this i variable is applied so when to list async is called on the i variable it returns a list on containing only the requested page okay to this method so this method is called on this i variable object then it returns a list containing only the requested page with this skip and take so what does the skip do skip bypasses a specified number of elements in a sequence and then returns the remaining elements right and take it returns a specified number of contiguous elements continuous elements from the start of a sequence that's what the take and skip the the properties has previous page now has these are two properties has previous page and has next page has previous page and has next page are used to enable or disable previous and next paging buttons now create async method is used to create the paginated list this is this returns a paginated list type which is what this class is now 
next we will add the paging functionality to the index method so going back to this so in the student index.cshtml.cs update the type of students from i list to paginated list okay like like this So index.cshtml.cs and uh, public i list. So I will make it public paginated list. Okay. Now update the on get async method uh, so on get async method I'll change from my clipboard um, on get async right public async task on get async the entire thing I will change V. Okay. Now this code if again coming back to the explanation. Now this preceding code adds the page index, the current sort order, and the current filter to the method signature as below. This is the method signature. Now it has changed it to include the current sort order, the current filter, and the search string and uh, now all the parameters are null when the page is called from the student link right so when you are calling the uh, page from the students link students tab the parameters are all null the user hasn't clicked a paging or sorting link right at that time it's in a blank canvas when the paging link is clicked the page index variable contains the page number to display now current sort provides the razor page with the current sort order. The current sort order must be included in the paging links to keep the sort order while paging. Now current filter provides the razor page with the current filter string. The current filter value must be included in the paging links to maintain the filter settings during paging and it must be restored to the text box when the page is redisplayed. This is quite a handful thing but we will have to get back to it through uh, putting breakpoints and debugging the code at certain points which I will tell you. If the search string is changed while paging the page is reset to 1. Now the page in the yellow marked uh, sec section the page has to be reset to 1 because the new filter can result in different data to display. Now when a search value is entered and submit is selected the search string is changed. Right? And the search string parameter is not null. So it is quite a few things are there to be um, understood here. Um, now next uh, is um, here uh, there are two question marks in the paginated list dot create async. So these represent the null coalescing operators. So where is it? This one. This is known as a null coalescing operator. This means that uh, if the paging it, page index is available, if it is not null, then it will get the page index value. And if it is null, then it has got the value 1. Okay. So it means that return value of page index, if it is the value, and if page index doesn't have a value or null, then it return 1. Now next we'll add paging links to the student razor page. So 
we'll update the markup in the index.cshtml. Okay. Um, this part is also mentioned in this paging links to the student razor page. Update the students slash index.cshtml markup with the code as shown in the video as also in the MS tutorial link. Okay. So please follow the MS tutorial also, uh, which is given in the video description. So what we will do is, you know, in this part, um, table there is there are quite a bit of change here um, don't worry you'll understand it once you go through it a few times um, so once is this part and then in this part last part these are the code changes and then further down This table, okay, there's another part of the code. Below this table, okay, and then here. Um, the column, the description goes, the column header links use the query string to pass the current search string to the on get async method. So, this was the code change. Now, we will have to run the app. The column header links use the query string to pass the current search string to the on get async method. On get get async method where is the on get async method okay um, the paging buttons are displayed by the stack helpers now here these are the paging buttons these are displayed by this tag helpers. Now, we will run the app again and navigate to the student page. So, going by this explanation, uh, not this one. Now, to make the sure paging works, click the paging links in different sort orders to verify that paging works correctly with the sorting and filtering inter a search string and a try paging. Okay. So, We'll get back to the application, click on control F5. students okay so I'll kick the page link so there is no previous page uh, now there is previous page so three results per page so there are total five results so there are two pages so paging works and to verify that paging correctly works with sorting and filtering now supposing I put this okay so search string equals Peggy you because it's a only one page result so you don't have this previous and next button enabled they are great and also try paging that's fine so uh, everything is working now the final section is about updating the 
about page to show student statistics. So, so far we have seen the sorting and the filtering and pagination and to get a better understanding of the code in the student slash index slash CSHTML page dot CS page um, you should put a breakpoint in the switch statement it is recommended switch sort order and add in watch for name sort date sort current sort and model dot student dot page index so dates name sort put a watch date sort uh, current sort and model dot student dot page index uh, where is that so these are some of the things you can try I mean uh, I leave it to you to decide the best course of action with the debugging just to have a deeper understanding of the entire thing and you can also select a breakpoint over here uh, at HTML dot display name for last name say last name you can put a few breakpoints just to experiment you know the debugging of this application okay so now the final portion is about updating the about page to show student statistics so this part is explained over here in this steps pages about.cshtml is updated to display how many students have enrolled for each enrollment date the update uses grouping and includes the following steps and for that we'll create a view model for the data used by the about page update the about page to use the view model and create a school view models folder in the models folder in the school view models folder add an enrollment date group.cs and write code as per the following okay so quite a few things still need to be done uh, so we'll create a school view models folder in the models folder so in the models folder I'll create another folder, add new folder, name it school view models. Okay, school view models, no space. Okay, right this time. And in the school view models folder i'll add a file that is class enrollment date group so click on uh, add class and name this class as enrollment date group there we are and copy over the code so just copy over the highlight entire thing copy over from my clipboard so you have got a public class enrollment date group as a data binding data type data type dot date enrollment date and student count now I'll have to update the CS file about dot CS HTML uh, where is about dot CS HTML dot CS file and copy from my clipboard again and then highlight the entire stuff control V okay. all right this is the code now the link statement going back to the explanation 
The link statement groups the student entities by enrollment date, calculates the number of entities in each group and stores the results in collection of enrollment date group view model objects. So this is the link query. Uh, this is the link query from student in context dot student group student by student dot enrollment date group by class is just like a SQL statement but written in a slightly roundabout way. Now finally we'll have to modify the about dot CSHTML the view page to view what we want. So I'll again highlight this paste from my clipboard code. Now we'll have to run this application. Now before that um, that's all. Okay, right. So I'll run the application and then we get to the about, about page. So control F5 Now navigate to the about page. Now you can see all the statistics, student body statistics is there. So that's it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, put your likes, put your comments and don't forget to subscribe and watch out for the next part which will be on uh, migrations. Okay, so we'll continue the series. It is essential that you see from end to end to understand.